So professor, let's talk about how we hooked up in the first place. Everybody wants to know. Everybody wants to know. Lots so we must have, It's actually a really cool story. It is cool. So we knew each other in high school. Yep. And I was class of 95, you were class of 96. Yep. But we didn't really talk again for a long, long time. Yeah, we kind of, even though we lived close, you know. Just didn't, it mm. just didn't really cross paths. And what's interesting is I had a friend from out of town come uh, a few years back, wanted to catch a Kobe really bad. It was the beginning of season. And so I wanted to go down to Matthews County in the Chesapeake Bay to what they call the Wolf Trap Light. But I had never fished there before. Right. And so I knew one man was <laughs> catching some fish there because it was always on Facebook. And he was always catching more fish than everybody else. I don't know about that. So I messaged you and I said, hey, Ron, would you mind help me know where to go in this area called Wolf Trap? Now, you did something that day that you don't normally do. Yeah, normally I just don't spit my numbers out to anybody. <laughs> Why'd you spit them out to me Man, that day? I just always knew you were a good guy. You know <laughs> what I mean? And I know what it's like to be under that pressure to have somebody on the boat yes. with you. And you you want to catch fish for them so bad. You know yep. what I mean? So, yep. I mean, I guess that's why I did it that day. I wanted you to catch fish for your boat. Well, I appreciated it. And it left an impression on me. And then where it got really interesting is... Over this last year, what many people don't know is my son, he got me into fishing in the first place. And I got one son, three daughters. My three daughters, they're not as into fishing because they tend to get a little bit more seasick. My son, he was born a Viking. That's right. And he is so good with fishing. He loves to fish. He actually learned to fish with local boat here, Ryan Rogers, the Midnight Sun, Legend. and the Magician, Magician yeah. Doug Gray. They yeah. both taught him how to fish on their boat with this amazing class they had called Mates in Training that it's they taught those kids. Yeah, an amazing program. Well, they had. wonderful program. So he learned, I was still a dummy, but he was teaching me. My own son at around eight or nine years old was teaching me how to fish. That's awesome. And we started to fish together and we started wanting to do more and more fishing. And we got to the point where we were now having really caught everything in the Chesapeake Bay. We'd gotten the big cobias and whatnot. And so we said, man, we want to go offshore. Well, my son, when he was going to turn 18, he was going to leave on his mission for our church for two years. We weren't going to be together. And so I set the goal to be able to go offshore fishing with my son out of Oregon Inlet in North Carolina to catch a tuna. We had never caught a tuna offshore together, and I wanted to do that in our boat. The problem was, as you know, it's hairy. It's dangerous. Yeah. It's scary going out of there. I bought a new boat, a 28-foot Steigercraft Pilot House, you've seen it because it's also part of the channel. And then once again, I reached out to this man <laughs> because he's the only one I knew locally that had really been brave enough to learn that whole process of fishing out of Oregon Inlet because you had been doing it how long in your yellow boat? Um, I mean, probably like eight years. Eight years you've you know? been going out. Yeah. So you, I reached out to you. I said, man, I'm, I'm trying to do this. I'll pay you to pay you to go with me. And you said, man, I don't want your money. I'm just thrilled to go fishing. Right. So we went out together and within the first 30 minutes, we had a double yellowfin hookup, which I will remember that. And then I think the second time we went out, everything really changed then. Yeah. The second trip, we went out again. And up to that point, you had fished about 40 times out of Oregon and mm -hmm. you had hooked up with some big eye tunas, but you never actually brought one into the boat. It was a curse for me. It, it was, really was. You've been vexed. Yeah. <laughs> and that day, we hooked up with a big eye of the lifetime. And, and I'm not exaggerating no. when I say that. It was 240 pounds. Yeah, most big eyes come anywhere from 100 to 180. Very rarely do you see one that big. A citation is 100 pounds. Right. And so 240 pounds was one of the biggest caught in the state that year. Oh. And what was so cool is Professor, he was managing the boat. My son, he reeled for about two hours and 15 minutes of the three hours. I reeled some. And then when we got that thing in the boat, we celebrated. And it was almost like from that point, it was just, we had this special moment, memory, connection, whatever you want to call it, that it really was a fish of a lifetime. And my son was able to do that before he went on his mission which is why if you look in the early videos, he's there. He's now not going to be in the videos for the next couple of years because he's out doing an amazing service. He is. 
And so that's how we got together, and then we started talking more. But I'd like for our audience, our community here at Saltwater Fishing University, to hear your background. It's interesting. Your fishing experience, yes, but also what you do for professionally, because that affects us here as well. Yeah, well, I've always been good with my hands, ever since I was young, building things, putting things together. So carpentry work was just came naturally to me. And uh, so that's what I've done for my occupation. And this guy is gifted. When, when he says it, he's gonna be humble about it. He's one of the most gifted craftsmen when it comes to carpentry in the area. Well, I've been fortunate enough to learn from some of the greatest people in the area and I picked it up really well. Like I say, it comes naturally for me. And I've always had this secondary passion of fishing. You know, I, I fished when I was a kid with my dad. And uh, like you say, when my, when my son got old enough to start fishing, that's what really put me in overdrive about it. And uh, I mean, he was five, six years old and catching fish bigger than he was. You know, and that just, that put a drive behind me. And it's just become my overall passion. And when I'm working, Doing carpentry work, I mean, I love it, but I'm thinking about fishing. You know what I mean? So it's uh, it has become my main passion, and I want to I want that to become my main occupation. Which is why we have big plans. Right. You shared that with me. I did. One day we were out there fishing, and a 60 footer went by, and the man was sitting up there on the bridge, the captain, and there were rods popping out of his rigger clips, and it was a beautiful day. I said, Mark, that's what I want to do right there. And that's what got me thinking. Now, for my background. I've spent the better part of a decade traveling around the world as a professional speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, you're in for a real treat. Give a big, great British welcome to our American guest, Marcus Sheridan. Wow. Yes. which many people don't realize that's one of the reasons the name of the boat is Speechless. Yeah. And the name of the company that we formed together is Speechless Sport Fishing. Why? Because the day we bought this, and there's another video on that, Professor was utterly stunned. He was speechless that day. But also, I have made a living and made a life off of giving speeches in front of thousands of people. And so that has been our history. And so once I heard that, from the professor, I thought, you know what? I think we could take this and we could make something out of it. And we started drawing up plans. And then we started looking for boats. Yes, we did. And we looked for about six months. Looked hard. We All looked hard and spent a lot of time online. Yeah. We drove up and down the East Coast, went a lot of field trips. We did, and that was a cool thing, you know. Here I am, a, you know, a country boy from Reedville. And I had only been on an airplane one other time my whole entire life. And all of a sudden, this man's got me flying all over the place looking at boats. I mean, it was just cool, you know? And who the funk it, we found a boat that wasn't even for sale. No. And we bought it that day. And now, with Speechless, we have huge plans. And we need and want you to be a part of it. We want to grow this channel to be a huge community. We want to give back. We want to be able to have people go on trips with us that wouldn't otherwise be able to go and experience That's right. something like that. Yeah. Ultimately, we want to create beautiful stories on that blue water and we want that to make we're so memories. passionate about. Yeah, memories just like you and your son had that That's day. It. You know? Memories for other families. That's right. Because when we say a fish of a lifetime, what that equates to is a memory of a lifetime. That's exactly right. We also want to create experiences on the charter here that are different because we're gonna be very hands-on. That's one of the reasons why we got an express boat. Yep. We wanted the professor to be down here with the people so that we could have that interaction so that you could really feel like you were a part of the experience and not just reeling it in, but you felt like you were part of the crew. It's different, it's not for everybody. We have our own vision, but we love this vision. We've got big plans for North Carolina. Professor plans on moving down there, uprooting, making this a full-time thing. And we've got other plans there in North Carolina that you'll hear about in the future as well. I'm sure you're going to see more on that. But it's just so exciting. And what's cool is we're just getting started. Just getting started. And I know you're giddy. Man, <laughs> I can't stand myself. I'm so happy. <laughs> well, that is the story. That's where we've been. That's where we are. This is where we're going. And again, we hope you're a part of it. We hope you're subscribed, that you share it with your friends. Welcome to Saltwater Fishing University. Welcome to Speechless Sport Fishing, to the boat, the professor and myself, we appreciate you. 
And as we say here on the channel, stay salty.